Hey, today I want to talk about two common overdrive circuits. So today I want to talk about probably the most popular overdrive circuits you guys are going to be looking to build when you first start building guitar pedals at home. Uh, that's the Ibanez Tube Screamer circuit and the Klon Centaur circuit. So these are my versions of the pedals. I have mods in both of them. I'll get to those mods a little bit later in the video, but first I want to tell you a little bit about how each pedal works. So starting with the Ibanez Tube Screamer circuit, uh, you've probably seen this in some variation, whether it was a TS-9 or a TS-808. Uh, it was made popular by guitarists like Stevie Ray Vaughan, but it can be used for country, blues, jazz, etc. Um, the Tube Screamer provides great overdrive and also probably its most popular functionality, a uh, pretty good mid-boost. You'll actually see some guitarists use this just as a mid-boost equalizer and chain it together with another overdrive circuit in series. The Tube Screamer circuit is split into four stages. The first stage is an input buffer stage. This is just done with a simple transistor. And the reason for this is it wants to increase the input resistance of the circuit which will just allow the circuit to maintain the high frequency fidelity of the signal. The second stage is a gain and clipping stage. Uh, this stage uses a JRC4558 op amp, one half of that chip with clipping diodes in the feedback loop. Also in your feedback loop, you're gonna have your gain potentiometer, which will just allow you to vary the level of distortion. The third stage is a tone stage. It's actually an active tone stage. So where a passive tone stage is just resistors and capacitors, an active tone stage will also amplify your signal as well as allow you to adjust the tone. Uh, the tone is adjusted with the tone pot, obviously, and that is in the feedback loop of an op amp. It actually uses the other side of that JRC4558 op amp, and that will just amplify the signal to make sure there's no signal loss as you adjust the tone. The last stage of the Tube Screamer is an output buffer. Very similar to the input stage, it's done with just a transistor. And in this case, we're just trying to lower the output resistance of the circuit so we maintain that signal fidelity down the chain. So just a little bit about the changes that I made to my Tube Screamer circuit. I'll start with the switching. Uh, I'm using just mechanical switching here with a three-pole double throw uh, foot stomp switch wired in true bypass. The original Tube Screamer circuit used active uh, switching with a JFET circuit. Secondly, uh, I'm using a B25K pot for my tone pot. Uh, this is different than the original that used a G20K pot. So a little bit different values and a little bit different curve on, uh, on the variability of your potentiometer. The last two items that I changed have to do with the clipping diodes. Uh, I'm using 1N4148 silicon diodes. The original diodes that were used for Tube Screamers were MA150 diodes. And I've also added this switch here that allows me to change modes between symmetrical and asymmetrical clipping. Symmetrical clipping would be in line with what the original Tube Screamer used. Asymmetrical clipping is more in line with a DS1 or an OD1 uh, by Boss circuit. The only difference between asymmetrical and symmetrical clipping, if you don't know what it is, is with symmetrical clipping, you have the same number of diodes in the forward and return path, or with asymmetrical clipping, you actually have different number of diodes in the forward and return path. So with that, let's plug this in and give you guys some sounds. <laughs>
So the Klon Centaur circuit, um, this is very different than the Tube Screamer circuit, starting right with the switching. The Klon uses buffered bypass instead of true bypass or some type of JFET active bypass. Um, it's not necessarily a bad thing. You just need to know that this is buffered bypass so you know where to put it in your chain on your pedal board. The Klon Centaur is split into five stages. The first stage, like the Tube Screamer, is a buffer stage, but here it's not using a transistor, it's using an op amp. It's actually using a TL072 op amp. And again, this is just done to increase that input resistance and maintain the fidelity of your signal. Once the signal is through the buffer, it's actually split into two pathways. One of those pathways is going to bypass the second stage of the Klon Centaur circuit. The other one is going to go into a gain and clipping stage. So this gain and clipping stage is the other side of that buffer's TL072 op amp package. Uh, it's going to be set up in a non-inverting configuration and it's going to have germanium diodes at the output uh, grounded. So that just provides hard clipping as opposed to soft clipping that you would get with clipping diodes in your feedback loop. And really it just means that it's going to be a little bit harsher distortion. The third stage of the Klon Centaur is a summing stage. So this is where the circuit takes that bypass signal from the buffer and the other mirrored signal of it that was distorted through the gain and clipping stage and sums them together. This is done with another TL072 op amp. However, this TL072 is powered off 18 volt rails as opposed to the nine volt rails that the buffer and the gain and clipping stage used. This is done by the inclusion of a MAX1044 doubler chip, which essentially takes the nine volts from the wall, doubles it and feeds the rails of this summing op amp. So the Klon is usually called a transparent overdrive. I think the summing of this clean and dirty signal is what gives it that name. Essentially you get your distorted signal, but you get to maintain the attack of your clean signal within it. Uh, the summing is actually controlled by your drive knob. So your drive knob on your Klon is actually a dual pot, meaning that there's two potentiometers in here. And essentially what it is, is it's just mixing the clean signal that came out of the buffer and the dirty signal that was fed through to the gain and clipping stage. You can find mods that will uh, separate out this so you can adjust both of them independently. But for me, I just put in a dual pot and called it a day. The fourth stage of the Klon Centaur circuit is really just a tone stage. Um, it's controlled by your treble knob here, and that's because it's just an active high pass filter. Uh, it's going to cut frequencies below 400 Hertz or approximately 400 Hertz, and it's gonna boost anything above it. Finally, the last stage of the Klon is the output stage. Here, there's just some high pass filtering and then a potentiometer to control the level, and that shows up in your volume knob here. So some of the mods that I did to my Klon pedal, um, first you'll see I have four uh, knobs instead of three. That's because I've added this bass knob. Essentially what this allows me to do is adjust the bass that enters the gain and clipping stage. So just a couple more tonal variations and where the only real tone knob is this treble cut knob, I thought this one would be good to have. Um, it was suggested by Mad Beans on the Mad Beans form. Um, I'll link it below and you can read about why they put this in there. Lastly, the other mod that I did has to do with the clipping diodes again. Um, the original Klon uses 1N34A germanium diodes. I'm using OA91 diodes. Um, they're germanium as well. I don't really know if it makes a difference in the distortion or how it sounds. I'm sure it does to some extent, but I like how my Klon sounds and I'll probably just leave it as is. So with that, let's check out the Klon and see how it sounds as well.
So I hope you guys enjoyed those demos. I hope you learned a little bit about these two common overdrive circuits. Uh, let me know if you're building them in the comments below and let me know if you're making any modifications that I haven't went over. I'm always looking for new changes that I can make to pedals. So thanks a lot guys and we'll see you next time.